Now listen, the number one thing on the minds of meteorologists and weather people all across the country is the tropical wave that's currently emerging from the African coast. August 11th is the first date for a named storm in the Atlantic, historically, but this wave definitely has a long way to go. So the question is, will it or won't it become the first hurricane of the season? So guys, we're gonna do something a little bit new, a little different, a little cool, dare I say. We're gonna call <laughs> this the four, where we all explain our point of view on this, and we're gonna say, yes, it will become the first hurricane, or no, it won't become a hurricane, and why we think so. I'm gonna start it off, and I'm gonna go macro scale here, and I'm gonna start it with the climatological factor. We're now in the month of August. It's uh, what, August 9th? Mm -hmm. Since 1966, the first hurricane has formed during August 24 times. So that's more than any other month. An average of about four hurricanes form in the month of August. That's three, maybe four times more than the month of July or even June. You're seeing there some of the names that we typically see, and there's a huge spike in that graphic. So about 20 to 25% of all hurricanes mm. occur in the month of August, second behind the month of September, which has about 34% of hurricanes. And if you remember, going back to 2019, Dorian formed on August 28th. Going back to 2017, Franklin formed on August 9th. And then on 2015, or in 2015, Danny formed on August 20th. So August- so you're saying yes then, Nick. I'm saying yes. You're saying yes. I'm saying right. yes. I think this wave will form into a hurricane, and I think it will be the first hurricane uh, of the season, and it'll happen in the month of August. Now let's kick it over to Bain. What do you think and why? I am on team yes, only because I think the ocean waters of surface temperatures have been incredibly warm, and on top of this, we're also in what we call a marine heat wave. If you've ever heard of this, this is basically like a normal heat wave, but for the temperatures in the ocean. And I bring this up because, I mean, already in August, our temperatures um, in the ocean are very warm. We already have that uh, 80 degree plus like temperatures, but now it's abnormally warm. And so it's even warmer than normal. So it does have all of the fuel that it needs once it starts to move into that area. So I really do think that this marine heat wave could start to get some stuff going. I also want to point out, too, there was a marine heat wave that helped uh, get Helene and Milton a lot stronger by the time mm. they ended up moving closer to the United States. So to that point, it kind of makes me think that once this wave starts to move closer and closer into those warmer waters, I, I think it really could get some juices going and mm. actually develop something. So I'm team yes on this mm. just because of how warm the waters have been. So the water's okay. heating up and the hurricane season yeah. is going to be heating up as well. So that's two yeses. All right. Let's kick it over to you, Michael. What do you think? Is it going to be a clean 3-0 and o or are you going to... Are you going to say no and spice things up? You know, here? so here's like my thought. Bane, I totally see what you're saying. And water temperature is like super important when it comes to forecasting the you know, development of uh, tropical systems. But for me, that's not the only ingredient. You know, there's a lot of other things that, you know, you think about baking a cake, you need more than just the heat in the oven. You need a whole lot of other ingredients okay. to come together for Let that. Cook. Let them cook. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm thinking. That's kind of what I was thinking. And then, you know, to your point, Nick, and then I'll jump into mine in just a moment here, but, you know, climatology is certainly super useful with what you were saying before when you look at climatolo the climatological peak of hurricane season. I agree. We're approaching that. But then I, you know, I also want to make sure that we mention the fact that, like, with climate change, that our climatology is now perhaps a little off. Okay. And so yeah. I don't know if we can actually use climatology as being as relevant perhaps as it was in years past. That's just my two cents on that part. Uh, so why am I going with no? Well, you think about and you look at you know our GFS model, for example, and right now it's showing that literally 10 days from now, it is showing a giant like category nine hurricane in the Bahamas <laughs> is basically what it's showing right now. Yeah. And again, that's like 10 days out. Even after that point, you know, day six we're monitoring, but when you get to day seven, day eight, day nine, day 10, at this point, guys, you know, we literally call these, quote, ghost 
storms mm -hmm. that fire up. And it's just because the models undergo, and you guys have heard of like the butterfly effect, AKA chaos theory, yeah. where you know, our, our GFS models, some of our, AI, our, uh, our um, AI models right now are just showing like these huge explosive over-exaggerated storms. I just don't think, Haley, at this point, okay. you know, Nick, that this is going to be, you know, okay. an issue. All right, I so understand. You're not, you're not saying a Category 9 storm. Right. You're not saying a storm at all. So, two to one. Haley, what are you thinking? Are you going to even up the score here, or are you going 3-1? Well, of course yes. I'm not going to even up the score. <laughs> Someone yeah. has to win, okay? Yeah, and for right. me, I'm going to go with the hurricane side. But, Michael, I get it. I don't know what yeah. I'm eating for dinner tonight. So knowing what's going to happen in 10 days from now is a hard thing to do, even for the forecast models. Hmm. Now, here's my point, okay? We have Invest 96L that moved through. Now, they initially said that there was a very high likelihood for development. So I get it. The models, they were a little funky. But what happened was the areas of high pressure created a weakness, and that pulled Invest 96L north into the North Atlantic, which is not a very conducive pocket of the atmosphere for the most part. Cooler waters, a little extra wind shear with the jet stream and frontal boundaries, and a little less moisture as you get further north and away from the equator. But watch what happens in the overall environment. That high pressure builds back in, and it creates this strong area that will pull this new wave right through the heart of the main development region. So, Bain, you've got the warm waters. Uh, Nick, we've got the climatology working in its favor. I say yes. Beyond that, we've got some questions. So but basically, uh, I'm curious, you're, yeah. you're just saying that the, the, the overall environment is conducive yes. in almost all areas for development. Yep, so we will, in my opinion, see Hurricane Aaron. Okay, so uh, right. although that I would think be the, the name, Aaron. That you, can, you can lead a horse to water, right? You got all the <laughs> ingredients there, but you can't make the horse drink, you Haley, can, is what I'm thinking. You can lead a horse to warm water with a sea surface temperature at or above 80 degrees, is what we're saying. Which there would be go. conducive for Hurricane Aaron. All right. <laughs>